you know, because we got a good team playing this week. So. Are there things um, we talk, we, it feels like we talk about this every week. Teams are quarterbacks are getting the ball out against you guys faster uh, over and over and over and over again each week, uh, faster than league average. Is there anything, anything that a front specifically can do to sort of mitigate that a little bit? Just got to keep playing and, and hopefully get your opportunities and take advantage of it. So. All you can do is just keep playing and trying to, you know, trying to affect the game in all types of different ways you can. So, what's uh, how would you kind of describe your experience playing against Tom Brady? I know you, you, in the last few years you guys have played him a lot, but what's kind of the consistent themes for you when you're going against him? Um, obviously, it's trying to find a way to affect him, um, not let him get comfortable because he can pick you apart if you do that. So, um, you know, that, that's that's the only thing you can do as a as a defense as as a defensive front when they want to drop back and pass. Trying to put pressure on him, trying to get close to him, make him feel uncomfortable, um, make him feel you. So he ain't back there and ain't able to pick you apart. So um, obviously, you know, his career speak for itself, the things he's able to do. So um, as a defensive front for us to do to help the secondary, we got to find ways to, you know, affect him. So. Do you have any um, specific memories from the end of that divisional round game last season down in, in Tampa? He started getting a little comfortable on us. So, um, and he started to find a way to, you know, put his team back in position to win that game, and we found a way to win it. But um, last year, last year, this is a new year. Um, like I said, um, two good teams playing against each other. Obviously, you know, we both want to win. And, um, you know, we, we just got to play our part and, and fly around and trying to find a way so we come out victorious. So. Aaron, I know you're, uh, you're facing you know, double and triple blocking out there, but how would you assess your play so far this year? Um, good things, bad things, but just got to keep playing, got to keep working, trying to find ways to, you know, affect the game any way I can. So. It's been a long time since you've been under 500 seven games and still a lot of football left. Yeah. But do you feel a greater sense of urgency this week? Well, obviously you want to, you know, get back on track. You know, um, you know, losing ain't a good feeling. You know, it's, it definitely puts you in a, in a, in a mood you don't want to be in, but um, you just got to stay locked in. You know, so that's a lot more football left. Um, um so for us to get to, we want to try to get to. Um, it's all in front of us. We control that right now. You know, it's, like I said, it's a lot more games left, and um, we can switch, turn things around. Um, and, it, and I start this week. So. When guys are getting, <laughs> sorry, I know I keep asking about this, but uh, when guys are getting the ball out as quick as they are against you guys, and, and sort of trying to use that as the last counter punch against the pass rush, um, how important is it then for the? players in the in the middle and, and back levels to tackle clean um, when they do that. Well that's huge. You never want to give no, you know, yak yards and, you know, get opportunity to get them on the ball on the ground fast and um, you know, we gotta continue to do that. So Sean had indicated that he was optimistic that Cam Akers would be could be back with the team and do practicing and playing. As a veteran, as a captain, do you address anything with him or is that just kind of completely separate you stay out of it um i stay out of it because I, I don't really know what's going on but i seen him out there today it was good to see him um he looked like he's in good spirits and so um as he came back out there and and you know he had a smile on his face that's good so i'm ready to see him you know back working so just to clarify you that walkthrough yes walk through yeah. Also, yeah. thank you thanks sir.
Yeah. All right, afternoon, guys. Hey, we're being up. You finally got Leonard Floyd going last week, but how do you get for Lewis and Justin Hunt from ball two? <laughs> I wouldn't say I got Leonard Floyd going. I say uh, Leonard Floyd found a couple good opportunities in that first half, got a couple good rushes um, playing off of AD. You know, I think AD got him going. You know, if you look at the rushes, AD got off, had a real good get off. We ran a nice little game with those two guys that executed um, a natural and flow came to the right level and hit the quarterback. And uh, we had a really good first half with those guys rushing the passer and got those guys going. Um, when you talk about rushes, always a unit type of thing. So when you talk about the Hollins or you're talking about Terrell Lewis, um, those guys got to work in unison to get to the quarterback. And you got to have the ability to do those things, whether it's communication, um, whether it's detail of the rush, whether it's execution of the rush, um, whatever those things are, or it just simply comes down to winning a one-on-one, um, those things all have to happen. And um, we haven't done it enough, and we got to get some of those things done. We talk about pass rush. So um, however you help those guys, um, some of the things that we've done, you know, with some of our type of different blitzes and some of our sims, um, and those guys got to get themselves going a little bit as well. You know, Tom's one of the best, if not the best, to ever do it in this game. Um, you know that. You know, when you're playing against Tom, you're playing against his strengths, you're playing against the things that he can do, um, how he can manipulate your defense with his eyes, how he can manipulate your defense with his feet. Um, some of the things that he can adjust to in the second half, you got to be ready for those things. Um, he's just different than most people. Um, he's an alien, um, so to speak. He's one of those guys. Uh, he's one of those guys that's been like that in this league forever. Um, his ability to stand in the pocket. Um, no matter what's going on around him and deliver the ball where it has to go has always been the strength of Tom Brady, um, going back to some of the greatest defenses in the world that I can remember playing with and playing against him. So he's um, he's always a doozy to play, um, no matter what's going on. And um, it'll, it'll be no different this weekend. Kind of a two-part question, if that's okay. Sure. Um, the first part being, I mean, week after week after week, it's quarterback, safety, 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 and specifically against your pass rush. Sure. Um, so what have you kind of seen that trend toward in that regard, and why, why are they doing that? You know, Aaron Donald, I mean, he's uh, he's the boogeyman, right? So uh, you're going to come in with the ability to get the ball out fast, and that's something that we've dealt with. It's, just, it's not new, um, something that just goes on. And then you got to play a little coverage. you got to drop back off him a little bit. you got to make him get impatient. Um, the things that we've been able to do is how we play as a team. You know, when you get those leads, you're not able to be those patient. But some of the grind fest, some of the um, – I remember Rod Marinelli a long time ago, he's called the torture ball events that you're having to play right now because of how close the games are. Coming out of halftime at 17-10 I – mean, excuse me, 14-10, as opposed to having a lead and be able to put pin back your ears and get a pass rush. Um, limiting some of those two-minute opportunities to get that pass rush. All the things that happen. You know, when you go against Aaron Donald, um, every coordinator in Nashville Bowl is going to plan for that ball to come out pretty quickly. And then you add Aaron Donald with a pretty effective rush and some really good blitzers. Um, that ball's going to come out pretty quickly. So that's not new. Um, that's not something, some new fruition. Um, that's just the ability of Aaron Donald. Like I told you guys before, uh, I remember game planning against him, and that was, that was quite a doozy when you're worried about scat protection and getting the ball off in time before he can get to you when you know it's quick game. It's an experiment in itself. And then, um, the second part, which obviously comes in tandem with this, is when you know quarterbacks are going to do that to you and they're going to try to attack the underneath parts, I mean, you guys are the best in the league right now at limiting explosive passing plays. Sure. But how do you um, get help underneath without sacrificing the ethos of that cap on the back? I think that's a great question. It's fair. Um, I don't think you can do that um, without protecting the whole team. You know, um, we live and die off not giving up explosives. And I think how we're living and dying right now is if we're able to not give up explosives, we got a chance to win that game. I think the story of the game last week was – the explosive play in the second half, the first half, the double pass. Uh, the explosive play in the second half, the 50 yard, the 58 yarder. Um, those things were the separators in the game. And if you can limit those things, and you can find a way to get off the ball and make people snap it one more time, that's got to be the way we got to win. There'll be times where you got to take your chances, you got to take your shots, um, and you don't want to be in those times a lot because that usually means you're playing from behind. But um, when you can get in those spaces where you can create some energy and create some pass rush. Um, those are things. Those times you got to be able to do it, and it's just a little bit difficult right now. You're completely fine. We'll give you. we'll give everybody an extra question for you. <laughs> Thank you, um, but because it comes in tandem, obviously, with what you said earlier, um, can you kind of expand on how playing with a, a more substantial lead than you guys have had in almost you know almost every game this year um, helps a defense be more aggressive with 
how they make plays on the ball? You know, just it starts off in just up front. You know, when you're able to get those guys to go and absolutely not worry about the run or have any worry in the world about that and they're able to get off the ball and they're able to get off, that's when the pass rush comes to life. Um, that also allows the coverage to come to life because that allows them to trigger faster. That allows them to sit on things and play a little bit more aggressive. Um, some of those things happen when you have leads. And it's not an excuse. It's just the way football was played. And and right now, we got to find our best way to win. And we did a nice job of it in the first half. Our offense went out, moved the ball pretty nicely. We were able to get off the grass, get them back opportunities. We are able to establish a lead. Boom, we give a big play. That puts us behind the eight ball, right, where we want to be. Because you come out in the second half and it's 14-3 as opposed to 14-10. That can change the dynamic of how you play the game. You get that interception from Jalen Ramsey that he dropped in the, in, the, in the beginning of the second half. That's a 21-3 game. That's a 21-10 game. And those things change for all of us. So we got to make the plays that we have the ability to make when we can make them. And that will put us in a position to, to go get people and be more aggressive in that way, Thanks, if that makes sense. Yeah. When you look at the film of that, that game last year, Aaron just told us that Tom got comfortable in the second half. Yes. So you came out, we got the big lead. Um, you come out in the second half. I wouldn't even say the second half. I can't remember the exact minute when it got comfortable. But it was somewhere around after one of those turnovers we had to give him a really good field position to get him comfortable. We had too many snaps. You know, if you get out there too many snaps on defense, that's also another bad sign. You know, in a realistic game, you want to play about 60 or so snaps on defense, get off the grass as much as you can, keep your offenses out there, have the ability to bleed the clock. Uh, we had some unnecessary turnovers. Um, that was another game that could have got out of whack that didn't because of some of the turnovers things and some of our complimentary ball things that happens in football all the time. But it's our job not to allow them to get comfortable. But if you keep giving the best player in the world, the GOAT, as Sarah alluded to, that many opportunities, he's going to get comfortable uh, the more opportunities he gets. And he was able to get comfortable throughout that game plan. He's able to get the ball out of his hands. He was able to hit us on a big play against our best player in Jalen. Um, and we create those type of things back to big plays. Uh, that's when you allow people to get back in game or stay in games or have the ability to, to, to be able to play with you. Speaking of turnover, Everybody wants two questions. You get nothing, Steve. Come on, Kurt. My last question. Um, <laughs> how do you create more turnovers? How do you create more turnovers? Technique and opportunity have to meet. Um, I got a great example from this game, and I'm not picking on anyone. You know, like my players know, I say it to them as well. We had some ops to make plays on some of the things we had with flat coverages and things of that nature that we didn't make those plays, and those are things we want to make, right? And then you get late in the game and you jump something that's not your responsibility trying to make a play, and that's when bad things happen. So when you go out and try to make those plays, that's when they go dark. When technique and opportunity meet, that's when you make the plays that you want to make for turnovers to get people opportunities to get to, get to cash in. I'm coming to you, Steve, next, I promise. I appreciate you know, uh, playing back under coverage and, and quarterbacks taking the five, ten yards. For, for the players on defense, how much discipline and patience does that take? I think it kind of frustrated with those five, ten-yard dump offs. Yeah, I don't think you get frustrated with those things. I think that's called uh, mental toughness in our game. Um, I think the part of it is knowing how you're going to win this game and how you want to win it. I think when you do the game plan, you explain to them what we're doing and how aggressive we're going to play in those moments and what's going to happen. Um, I think going into that game versus the Niners, you know you got to stop the run. I think going into that game versus the Niners, you're saying no disrespect to Jimmy, but you got to make Jimmy beat you. And he absolutely did. Credit to him, right? And when he's going out there, you got to say that's got to be what's got to be the lead in charge of what's going to happen and how it's going to go down. And those guys understand that going into each game. So when you make your changes at halftime, whatever they are, um, those things kind of complement what they're doing that day, um, something that can help you. And then it's just a matter of having the ability to win those games and pull those games out, um, sort of like the NFC Championship game, you know, what we're able to do. And, like, you're not going to stop good offenses or good offensive coordinators from getting yards, but you got to stop from being able to dictate terms what they were able to do in that second half and win the game. Steve, we're going to Steve. I'm coming to you next. And you know that the problem is you lost so much weight, nobody can see you. So you're talking about, you know, you, you don't have to worry about the run as much. You can be more aggressive. Tampa Bay does not <laughs> hide the fact that they don't really try to run the ball. I mean, it's been that way for a couple of years with Brady down there at Tampa Bay. I don't know if it's necessarily Brady. You know, I, I think it's... Um, but I mean, I mean with, you, with him since he's been down there. I mean, sure. He had the best play in the world and one of the best players that can do what he can do. Um, the best game they played this year was versus the Dallas Cowboys, in my opinion. They went out and they ran the ball really effectively. Um, he threw the ball really effectively, and they get a nice mixture of it. Um, I think the fact that it gets lost that when they run the ball effectively, not necessarily for the most amount of yards, but when they're able to get Fournette going, and he's effective to get a seven-yard game, to get a six-yard game, that does nothing but make time more uh, unpredictable, so to speak. Like in their first half last week, they were... No question. You know, the, the first drive. 
You know, that first drive was as impressive as we can get. He used some outlet passes with the screen. He's able to get some of the run game going. He's able to knock a few explosives out. And then I think their coach alluded to recently they had some problems in the situation of football. Red zone, two minute, they lack luster some play, and that's what they want to get better, and that's what we can't allow it to happen. So do you, knowing that they did that last week, but I mean, historically, I mean, they are throwing it 50 times a game, do you start off dialing it more aggressively, or do you start off kind of slow playing a little bit, seeing? I'm going to go old school grizzly coaching. You got to come out and stop the run first. You have to. Yeah, that's the old school grizzly way. I can hear Monty Kiffin saying it right now in the back of my head. Got to go stop the run, man. Come on, guys. Right? But you got to go stop the run, right? You know they want to come out and they can be an effective and they can run the football and they can get him into a rhythm with some play action pass. They can get into a rhythm, throw some nice, easy screens for completions to get some yards. They can get him ahead of the chains and keep him that way. Um, that's the way to be effective. What they didn't do the next couple of drives after that first drive they had last week versus Baltimore was able to maintain that. They put him in some hard situations in the second and longs by knocking out the run, knocking out that screen, third down and longs by knocking out that run, by knocking out that screen, extension to their run game, so to speak. Uh, they were to knock those things out, and that's what you got to do. You, you can't get so caught up in analytics that you only see the 50 pass attempts. What were they? What, where, where were they featured at? Um, how they go about their business? What are their extensions to the run game? With the screen game, you know, just was always oh, just 50 pass attempts of drop back pass and seven on seven. That's just a big difference. Yeah, Rene, that, it sounds like uh, Cam Akers is back in the fold and will be practicing. <laughs> but as as a, as a long time coach with head coach experience, I'm just curious: Do you offer Sean and or Cam counsel through that? Have you through this process, or and will you kind of go? Hard to say that I'm going to offer Sean counsel, right? Sean's the boss, right? Right. But he leans on you. We had, a, on you, right? We had a, a disagreement with Cam and our system, right? He stepped away from the building a little bit, and now you got to invite him back into the fold. You know, sometimes you got to get away from tough situations to go through some adversities to have that ability to come back and shine, right? Those two will mend out their differences. You know, obviously, we'll always talk about everything. Like, when I say everything, we talk about everything. When I'm talking about Sean, is everything. So whether we're talking about... Um, coaches, we're talking about players, we're talking about uh, acquiring players, um, acquiring, talking to our own guys, getting our own guys going. Uh, we're always going to talk about those things. Um, we drafted Cam for a reason. We believe in him. He can run the football, he can make people miss, and he's got to get back to doing that. And he's got to prove it again to his teammates, and he's got to prove it again to his coaches. And when those things happen, you're able to put people back into your environment. You're able to put people back into what you want to do. And in and, and my opinion, and my dealings with Cam, I think he's got all the best intentions for the football team and himself um, that a human can have. So, like, let's give him another chance, especially when it's yours. That makes sense. And you lost me five bucks. Well, that's one, the last one. <laughs> one, one last that was one. the pound. Last one. Yes. So this is more general than this game, but when you see certain personnel in the back, does that, it, it, let's say it's third and five, second, you know, does that dictate whether you blitz or not knowing that this back is not – Protection as opposed to so certain game plans for sure. Certain game plans will tell you just based on the back, even if he's not good in protection, some people have protection back. Some people have right. a guy they're going to put back that you know is not going to be a scat type of mentality. You know, um, Some people have those type of deals. So that always dictates some of the things you're going to have. Um, a lot of times you'll get 11, you'll get the personnel, you get whatever that back is out there um, to dictate some of the things you're going to do, anticipating some of the things they might do, whether it be scat, uh, whether it be aligned and empty, whether it be motion and empty, um, whether it be a protection guy in there to, to sit in the pocket and do some things to throw the ball down the field. Um, all those things that take turns. Um, a lot of times it's the looks to own that you can talk about as well after the play call is given. Um, a lot of times it's um, your planning and how you go about your business based on D&D. &D. So all those things talk to you, and I think you got to let those things work for you. So for sure um, there's always some determinations on who the back is. Um, there's always some determination on what the looks to owns are and definitely some of the D&D &D and some of the play call tendencies. That's it. See you guys later.
What's up, guys? How's it going? A little za today? Hold on. I got to see what you guys have. This is a <laughs> weekly thing. A little za? Sounds uh, All right. like uh, Cam Akers was back at the walkthrough. Yep. He, will he practice today? And what? Yeah, first practice will be today. Um, you know, gr- glad to have him back and um, just see where he's at. You know, it's been a little while, obviously, since he's practiced and, you know, been in the, been in the installs and all those kind of things. So uh, glad to have him back. Hopefully we can get him going. And if that's this week and we can turn that thing, you know, get him turned over both physically and mentally to play on Sunday, great. If not, then we'll continue to kind of develop that, you know, see how that situation develops and uh, see where we can go moving forward. And when you have a situation like that, is it just kind of the player's back, back to business, nothing said, or yeah. how, how do you – Oh, forward? yeah, I mean – I think the players believe, and, and I believe, and our, and our staff does, that everybody deserves a second chance. And, um, you know, de- whatever the issues are or things that have occurred is if we make a decision to bring somebody back and Cam's all on board, the players, the staff, everybody's on board to make that decision. It doesn't just kind of come overnight and just decide. So um, that was something that we've been talking about, and um, everybody's on board. So uh, we'll see where it goes. Yeah, I think it's just kind of, um, you know, it's hard when you're a running back and we've had a lot of different moving parts up front and not a ton of success running the football. And then, um, you know, some things end up kind of looking at the player, the running back, the O-line, well, where does the finger get pointed? Well, at the end of the day, it's all on all of us to get it right and to be, you know, have the, the continuity that we're looking for um, as an offense, as a team, as a program, as an organization. And, um, you know, I think that some differences, I wouldn't necessarily know if it's differences, but it's more so just, hey, how do we get the most out of each player and, and, and really kind of work to their strengths, do exactly what they can do well. And also the player has a lot of responsibility as well to perform on Sundays. And, um, you know, we ask backs, to, you know, to be creative and to do just some different things when they are in space or have their ops. So I think it's more just getting them a new opportunity, a little bit of a fresh, you know, outlook on things, you know, and we'll see where it goes. When you, Sean has even mentioned in the, before the season started that sort of overhauling and revitalizing the run game with a solid identity was a big goal of his. Um, when you guys are going through these first few weeks of the season, it's just not happening in, yeah. that, in that way. Um, what's, is the problem solving inclusive? Like, how yeah. many voices are in that room? Oh, solving? yeah. I mean, I don't know if it's a, a, a ton more voices, but we are all hands on deck trying to figure it out. You're trying to figure out what are the most efficient ways to try to run the football. And it's a work in progress. It's not something that when you have a revolving door up front and multiple different running backs playing and Guys are a little bit nicked up. These aren't excuses. These are reality things that when you run the football, it takes all 11. And um, that's something that we're working through. And, yeah, everybody's been involved trying to, hey, what's the best way to attack the Tampa Bay Buccaneers this week? Not as a whole or as a whole, you know, change scheme the whole season. We're really literally just looking at how do we improve the run game for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers against a great run defense um, to be able to be somewhat efficient in order to be, able to move the football like we did in some of those drives against San Fran. Looking back at the game last year, Liam, uh, you know, do, do you want to be a little more patient with the running game and get more carries to guys or maybe incorporate some more jet sweeps? Um, you know, I think we had a good plan. I think we were doing some really good things. You know, we went three and out to, to start the game. We go on two great drives. Um, we end up making the decision before the half, which I think was a smart decision based on the way the game was un- unfolding. Um, and then the second half game kind of gets away from you a little bit. We go on that one drive that we get out to the, you know, our own 40, we punt it. They get, we get them semi backed up. They go 90, we go three and out, they go touchdown. And now you're starting to chase points a little bit in that world. So, um, I don't know if we could have necessarily stayed much more patient with how it was looking running the football and also the way the game was starting to unfold. Yeah. Change what you guys are able to do in the passing game. It's it's just it's another you know guy that they have to respect specifically in the back end and um, you know as Van starts to progress back physically, mentally, 
that's when hopefully, you know, he'll start to be able to get more involved, get more targets, feel more confident in everything. And uh, just hearing the play calls for Van, like when he was out there last week in the jog through, it was so great to have his juice and his spirit and his energy back in there. But you start to hear play calls again and things start to spin and not that he was behind mentally at all, but some of those things take a little bit of time to get back into the flow of things and uh, excited to see what Van can do this Sunday. Yeah, traditionally, the Buccaneers have been a great run defense. Last yeah. few weeks they've got tagged for sure. Uh, pretty well. Do you see opportunities there? Maybe on some of those things you've seen in those three games, you guys have had that run game. Yeah, and a couple good run offenses as well. You know that, and I'm not saying like that was. Yeah, they they can really run it, and that's their identity as an offense. And they have the quarterback aspect. I think that gives you something completely different than obviously than what we can provide. But yes. I'm not saying that we're going to walk into this game saying we're going to go run it 40 times on these guys and be able to get after them in that way. But I do think that there's ways that we feel confident being efficient, trying to just at least give our guys alleviated downs to run the ball and our quarterback. We need to give him some alleviated downs as well, just trying to be more efficient. If we can get four, we're in great shape. You know, and I know that sounds probably a little bit stale, but if we can get four yards, we'll be really happy. You know, so that's the, the goal. I don't necessarily know if there's like a chink in their armor. I think they went against a really good offense in terms of running the football recently. Um, but I, there, there's definitely some ops. When, when you talk about that revolving door up front, can you express the challenge that you see every week with the offensive game plan? It's just continuity. You know, there's, there's continuity issues no matter what. Communication, just playing next to a guy is really difficult when there's – a new one every few days or we're trying different things out to give us the best five that can play for us every week. And um, that's trial and error a little bit as well during the week of practice and um, during the game. So there's not only the communication, but just the chemistry. Everybody's talked about the offensive line being five strong, one unit all together. Well, when you have the injuries, you have the revolving door a little bit, that's difficult to all get on the same page and do things as one. Um, and that's something that we're striving for. And hopefully when we can you know, get some consistency out of these guys in terms of the you know, lineup being consistent each week, hopefully we'll start to see some improvements. On the other side of that, how has Alaric Jackson sort of emerged in this opportunity? He's, he's just so steady. You, you never really see him get either which way, high or low. He's pretty steady as he goes. Um, I think he's embraced the opportunity to play a position that he's very passionate about. Um, and, and he did a nice job. You know, I thought he did a nice job last week and continued to develop at the tackle position. But um, he's so steady. He's a pro. Uh, he's continuing to learn, obviously, being a young player in this league. But um, really excited for him. Rob Haven's side, obviously, from a very slightly different generation yeah. than he is. Yeah. But Rob said um, when he's on the sideline with him, Alaric is, like, acting like he's just standing there smoking. Totally, yeah. What does that phrase mean? I think he's just, it's not that he's, you know, some lineman you want to see like the fire or like those kind of guys. He's just like this all the time. And, um, you know, it's like, remember, you see Eli Manning and he kind of just looked like this all the time. That's a good thing, especially at the tackle position. You know, you want somebody who's calm, cool, collected, doesn't get frazzled. The game's not too big for him. The moment's not too big for him. Um, and he's a good teammate. He just wants to play well for us and do the best he can. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it.